Panorama TV presents How They Do That, where we explore the world of professional photographers and share their techniques with you. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this episode of How They Do That. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, today on the show, we have a fashion, lifestyle, and portrait photographer who also specializes in animal photography. Her name is Winnie Ow, and she is joining us today. Thanks for joining us today, Winnie. Thank you, Mark. Well, let's talk a lot about, uh, you've got so much work that you do. I love your fashion work, your lifestyle stuff, but what really drew me to your portfolio are your portraits of dogs. So can you tell us a little bit about how you began to shoot uh, portraits of dogs and, and tell us about that process? Well, um, I've been shooting dogs since about 2004 and it's kind of something I fell into. Um, there's a picture on my website of a dog named Bombi and it's actually the dog that used to live in an apartment building. I was um, living in Boston at the time and my neighbor's dog would always hang out in the vestibule of my building. So one day I was just you know, I shoot with an RZ when I um, photograph dogs, and I had my RZ out, and I was saw Bombi sitting in the vestibule like she always was, and she was this adorable dog, like she has some kind of limp, so she would always walk around, and you would see her, and she looked, she always looked kind of sad, but in a really cute way. So she was sitting in her favorite spot, and there was this, you know, beautiful light coming through the window, and I decided to take her portrait. So I took her picture and she looked like all, you know, how she always does and when I got the pictures back it was, you know, the first time I had really done a, a formal kind of dog portrait and I was really, you know, impressed by them but they are my own photos and I was really excited. Um, I decided to show my neighbors uh, the pictures too because it was their dog and they were really, really touched by them and, you know, really sadly, about maybe a month after I took those photos, uh, Bombi passed away. And, you know, I ended up giving a print to my neighbors and they just started crying. It was really, really sad, but like, at that moment I realized how wonderful, like, something that I was doing could be for someone, that I could make an impact on people and really make them feel like um, connected and have a great memory of something that they, you know, was a big part of their family. So that kind of got me started and ever since then I've just been shooting, you know, any commissioned portrait that people want and also, you know, personal projects. Well, one of the things that I noticed in your dog portraits is you really play on the strong connection between uh, dogs and the, their, their companions, their people companions. And so, for example, you've got a, an entire uh, book that's it's coming out called Canine Chronicles that I, I love because it shows um, these fictional, uh, real dogs, but uh, fictional stories about those dogs. Uh, so you've got a, a Steve Jobs dog and a Charlie Chaplin dog, and it really shows that connection between people and animals that I love. Can you talk to us a little bit about how Canine Chronicles came about and, and some of the, the animals that are featured in the book? Sure. Um, Canine Chronicles came about because, you're right, I wanted to do, you know, a story that was kind of more than just, usually I take kind of classic portraits of dogs in, in their home environment. And I was looking to take everything a step further from, you know, really showing the human quality of dogs so we decided to create a story where each dog would represent the they would be the canine counterpart as we call it of a famous person so canine chronicles was a kickstarter project that's how we funded it and i'm making it with my sister so my oldest sister alice is doing all the design and layout and my middle sister cindy is writing all the stories. So we basically concepted it by using um, my pictures as a launching point and then using all the skills that me and my sisters have, we thought a historical fiction would be the best and like most fun way to create something together. 
Well, there's another project that I, I found very, very interesting, and it's something that um, I think some dog owners find controversial. Not really, but um, you dressed up all these dogs in Halloween costumes, and some of them are adorable, and some are just really, really funny. Um, tell us a little bit more about Halloween Dog Parade. So that project is actually something where I went to um, Tompkins Square Park in New York has a Halloween dog parade event every year. And it's actually thousands of dogs and they all come and there's a, it's not exactly a parade, like I thought it'd be little dogs marching around, but it's actually all the dogs in a dog park and they're, each owner dresses up the dogs and then there's a contest to see who has the best costume and you know it's totally crazy um, so I decided this year to do a personal project and take portraits at the event and we set up a studio outside we um, got everything all set and it was crazy we just had I think I shot something like a hundred dogs you know maybe two hundred dogs in like four hours and you know normally I shoot about one dog in two hours so the sheer amount of animals was insane but it was it was amazing it was an amazing experience and so fun to see all of the dogs and all of their owners and people dressed up together it was crazy well let's talk a little bit about uh, some of your other work you've got some fashion work some portrait work um, and really, I, I really love one of this uh, one of these shots that you have, and it's uh, it's called Family Portrait, I believe, and it's of it looks like a mother and a daughter, and they are dressed in the same exact or very similar outfits as uh, two dogs that are in a different portrait. And so, can you tell us about how you conceptualized that and shot it? That shoot was for a designer named uh, Charlotte Tarantola, and she's a sweater designer out in LA. And they came to me saying like, well, Charlotte usually designs sweaters for women. She's had a women's line for a long time. She also has a kid's line. And what they started to do is they, they had launched a, a pet line. And they were really excited because they had taken, basically they had all this leftover fabric from creating the sweaters for women and kids. And they realized they could make dog sweaters out of it. So what they wanted to do was create uh, some branding imagery that would showcase the brand and their, their kind of a you know, high-end chic sweater line. And then they also wanted to showcase the fact that uh, the sweaters were now available for women, children, and dogs. So I thought it'd be great to come up with a kind of like a wealthy family portrait and kind of make it tongue-in-cheek so that's why we put everyone in the exact same sweater and we also put, you know, kind of styled the, it's supposed to be a mom and daughter uh, together, although the mom might look more like a sister. But regardless, they're all dressed uh, the same and we shot it in this, it's called the Harlem Flophouse, so it's, it's a brownstone up in Harlem and it's a beautiful location. Uh, all these different hotel rooms with really great wallpapers everywhere so we had a lot of fun well one of the things that i uh I have a lot of people ask me about is to ask you what kind of gear you're using so when you are shooting uh, your dog portraits or people portraits what kind of cameras are you using what lenses do you favor what kind of lights etc can you walk us through sort of technically how you're making these fo uh, photos um i'm one of those people that i I vary my gear based on the shoot and what's needed. So I have my favorites, but I'm also a firm believer in there's not a perfect, you know, one and all camera. There's a perfect camera for every situation. Uh, so for this particular shoot that we did for Charlotte Tarantola, um, I was using a Canon 5D Mark II, and it's definitely the camera that I probably use the most. I would say it's a great all-around camera and it it works for a lot of my projects you know and I love the high ISO ability so I use that a lot I have um, for lenses I like to use prime lenses and I generally like to shoot with wider ones so I have a 
17 to 40, which is not a prime, so I just lied, but I do like that camera for crazy wide shots. I have a 40 millimeter Voigtlander prime lens, which I really like. It's a pancake lens, and I actually use that a lot for travel. And then I've got a 50 millimeter Zeiss lens. It's a manual focus. And I like that because it makes me feel like I'm using a real old camera. And I also have a 50 1.4 Canon lens, which is has autofocus and it's you know great for situations where I need autofocus. Outside of that, I don't have too many others that I use. Um, let me think, for other cameras I also use the RZ, it's the Mamiya RZ67 and I shoot a lot of my dog portraits with that and I still shoot some film so when I use my RZ um, I try to use film with it and with that I have a 110mm lens and a, hmm, I have to remember the other lens. What, what about your uh, flashes? Do you have any, do you use speed lights or studio strobes? How do you light your, your subjects? Um, let's see, for me personally, I either, I own some gear and I also rent gear when I need to. So I really use Profoto Acute 2s, uh, the 2400 pack, that's what I own. Um, I usually like to light things so that it looks somewhat like daylight. So I have a big 12 by 12 silk that I like to use to kind of mimic a, uh, a giant window. So I'll, I'll set up a, the 12 by 12 silk and I'll shoot umbrellas through it. Um, ideally a medium white pro photo umbrella, but I'll just use whatever, whatever is around sometimes. I also have, a, for location work, I have this uh, Fotec soft lighter which is really great it's um kind of a medium-sized umbrella and it has some diffusion that you can put around it so it works great for just as a, a key light uh, it's very portable and i love the light that that gives me and then for other shoots you know we run a lot of gear and it's usually pro photo pro sevens or pro eights whatever it's available um and I'll kind of mix up the light sources, but I'll use white umbrellas, Fotex, uh, medium softbox, small softbox that are chimeras. It, it kind of varies, but I tend to not use super hard light sources, so I don't use too many grids and I don't use too many beauty dishes. Okay, well, that's a lot of gear. I love uh, how you've described how you shoot. Let's talk a little bit more about your uh, fashion work and some of your commercial photography. Specifically, there's a, uh, a series of photos that I love that you took, and it's of a female model, and she's in, it looks like, a metal workshop. There's all kinds of saws and metal uh, pieces and things around in countertops. I love that juxtaposition of beauty with grease and grime. Can you talk a little bit about uh, that photo shoot and how you pulled it off? Uh, sure. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm glad you liked the photo. Um, I really love that shoot as well. Um, it's for a company called Fleabags and they're based out of Brooklyn too. They make exclusively handbags and accessories and the bags are sustainable and eco so we are trying to emphasize that nature of the product. So we shot in this a uh, place called Uhuru Design. It's a woodworking factory. And, you know, it was, it was kind of one of those dream locations because it was gigantic. It had beautiful windows and high ceilings and so much texture everywhere. Um, so exciting to shoot there. So uh, we basically did what I normally do on a shoot, which is I went with the client and we scouted the location um, a couple days before the shoot. We found all of our favorite places and then, you know, my stylist and all of us, we matched um, pretty much like the best, the best areas where the product would really pop off of the background. So uh, we were really lucky and it was just such a, a nice place to shoot. 
All right, well, uh, thank you so much for all of these great photos and the information that you gave us. Um, we are out of time, but there's so much more for people to see. Can you tell us how we can see more of your work? Tell us about your websites and where people can find you. Yeah, sure. Um, you can go to my website, which is winniewow.com. That's my main site. And if you just want to see dogs, you can go to dogportraitsbywinnie.com. And if you want to check out information just on my book project, it's uh, caninechroniclesbook.com. Well, thank you again so much, Winnie, for being on the show today. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I had a great time. You bet. Well, thank you. Again, everybody, remember, if you want to see more of Winnie's work, you can always go to the Adorama Learning Center. And what we've done is we've added a list of all of the links that Winnie just gave us, as well as some of the portraits that she has sent over to us, as well as a bunch of other videos about photography and interviews with other photographers and all kinds of questions and answers about photography. So make sure you don't miss it. Just zip over to the Adorama Learning Center. Well, thanks again for joining us, and I'll see you again next time. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.